No business lasts forever. Of course, professions like farming and medicine have, but there has never been a single corporate entity that has withstood the test of time. That fact is even true for the most successful businesses today, including the e-commerce giant Amazon. So how long will Amazon last? Our prediction? Not that long, actually. We believe that Amazon will remain in business for just 25 more years. In this video, we are going to explain why no company, not even one as big as Amazon, can operate forever. And then we will talk about the specific reasons that may bankrupt them. We will then conclude by giving our prediction of what will cause Amazon's ultimate demise. The average lifespan of a modern-day S&P 500 company is just 15 years, according to the BBC. Even Jeff Bezos, Amazon's former CEO and current chairman of the board, has publicly stated that he expects the company that he founded in 1994 to eventually fail. He said, quote, I predict one day Amazon will fail. Amazon will go bankrupt. If you look at large companies, their lifespans tend to be 30 plus years, not 100 plus years. According to his outlook, that gives Amazon only about three to five years of remaining life. While that's probably a bit too aggressive, the company does face many short and long-term risks. So what's Amazon's biggest threat? Well, if all else stays relatively equal, they have to really mess up to go out of business. There has to be a gigantic scandal like a huge data breach or their open support for war crimes to make Amazon rapidly crumble. Or at the complete opposite end of the spectrum, many small and seemingly harmless disturbances can start to snowball into a series of market share eroding events that ultimately take down the giant. Either way, we are confident that one of these outcomes will be exactly what ends the e-commerce conglomerate. Amazon is currently one of the top 10 largest companies in the world based on market capitalization. They are presently valued at roughly $800 to $900 billion depending on the value of their stock, which still makes them only about one-tenth the size of the largest company in history, which was the Dutch East India Company of the 1600s. Amazon briefly hit the $1 trillion mark in 2018 and joined the club again in 2020 eventually hitting a high of $1.8 trillion before slowly declining to their current value. That actually makes them the world's first public company to ever lose $1 trillion in stock value. Yet, they are still functioning quite well. Amazon continues to average about $400 to $500 billion in revenue per year and keeps seeing a rise in their net income, which has averaged a healthy $15 to $20 billion per year over the last five years. So it doesn't look like money is an issue like it was in the early 2000s when they were burning cash while trying to establish their market share. In fact, their balance sheet shows a stockpile of $96 billion in their cash and cash equivalent positions at the end of 2021. That means they can lose a billion dollars a year and still be in business for roughly 100 more years. So what are the realistic ways Amazon will go out of business? We believe that there are six distinct possibilities that will take down this multinational giant. And we also think that each of these scenarios could actually happen within the next 20 to 30 years. One of the major threats to Amazon's existence is based on their own success. Over the years, Amazon has been able to grow by identifying more and more profitable markets. What started as a book company has swelled into a marketplace exchange with 25,000 subcategories that include products ranging from electronics to food to digital services and even a TV and film studio. Additionally, Amazon owns a handful of what would be considered large companies in their own right, including big names like Whole Foods Market, MGM Studios, Twitch, iRobot, Zappos, and even IMDb. Amazon has proven that they could diversify their business and scale it across virtually any market and product category, but that success, which is spread over many types of businesses, could be the reason for their eventual downfall. There is such a thing as over-diversification. Specifically, it is unrelated diversification that can actually cause them a problem. In the simplest terms, businesses grow over time due to executing a few things really well. They can then develop synergies or efficiencies among those few things. 
So what are Amazon's major strengths? One could argue that it is their ability to provide customer convenience and their ability to manage a world-class distribution and logistics network. But what happens if those strengths get stretched too far? For example, Amazon owns Amazon Fresh and Whole Foods, yet also owns Amazon Studios, Amazon Prime Video, and MGM Studios. The food industry really has nothing to do with the TV and film business. There is virtually no infrastructure or specialized labor that Amazon can easily reuse or deploy across both of those industries. This is where this concept of unrelated diversification comes into play. There are basically three levels of diversification that a company can be classified as. A single undiversified business, one with related diversification, or one with unrelated diversification. There have been several studies, including one done by McKinsey, that have suggested that the performance of large conglomerates peaks with the right blend of related diversification and actually goes back down due to unrelated diversification. When a company combines businesses with a limited strategic fit and no value chain relationships, they only gain a minimal upside growth, but their downside risk does not actually get mitigated. That makes sense since these types of companies can become too unfocused and have their resources spread too thin to defend against attacks in all of their markets. That could actually be happening to Amazon as we speak. Would you say they are truly the leader in any specific market category? For electronics, the physical locations of Best Buy have allowed them to re-emerge as a strong market force. For specialty groceries, Thrive Market has made quite a name for themselves. Same with Wayfair for furniture. Basically, competitors have slowly been able to chip away at Amazon's market share in each of these categories. That may cause them to start bleeding money and resources to try to defend their core positions while being a bit overextended in other businesses like TV and film. In turn, they would not be able to leverage their existing capabilities to support these other non-related entities. The next major threat to Amazon is developments in technology. It was advances in technology that has allowed Amazon to flourish, but it could also be new, yet to be discovered technologies that can negate Amazon's current advantages and help put an end to their reign altogether. There is really no way to predict the exact type of innovation that could put a significant dent into Amazon's market share, but we could speculate based on their current core competencies that we previously spoke about. If we believe that customer convenience and a strong supply chain are their strengths, then it isn't too far-fetched to think that a major technological disruption in either realm could negatively impact their stranglehold on the market. For instance, if customers could start 3D printing items directly in their home, it would eliminate the convenience factor that Amazon currently offers. What would be the point of Amazon if you could buy a printing license directly from Sony to 3D print a new TV, or if you could download a blueprint from Nike to weave a new shirt in your own house? A breakthrough technology like that could surely lead to Amazon's failure. The third risk that could eventually define how long Amazon will last is another unpredictable yet always evolving factor, which is government regulations. Just like technology, we cannot predict what the regulations of the future will be, but we can count on the fact that the current landscape will almost certainly change. There is already antitrust pushback against Amazon, especially in the European Union, who opened an investigation against them in 2020. Faced with a fine of up to 10% of its total revenue, which could reach as high as $50 billion, Amazon came to a settlement at the end of 2022 with a pledge to change some of their business practices and structure within the EU. But future laws and regulations may not be as kind to Amazon as this agreement was for them. Governments and their antitrust laws have already brought down some of the biggest companies in the world, including Standard Oil in the 1900s and AT&T in the 1980s. Amazon is also exposed to potential changes to labor laws, as well as changes to regulations regarding consumer products and returns. At the same time, there are taxation concerns that could target Amazon and its profits as well. For instance, there was the G7-backed Global Corporate Tax Plan that was proposed in 2021. If enacted, it could cost Amazon an estimated $5 billion more in federal income taxes. These unfavorable regulations could easily cut Amazon's profits in half, which could then accelerate the demise of its over-diversified businesses, since they would then be unable to rely on the extra cash flow to help prop them up. 
we may not recognize the future Amazon as the Amazon we all know today due to a change in their corporate structure. They may voluntarily or be forced to spin off or divest a portion of their business and create a new independent entity that is managed separately. This scenario is not necessarily bad for Amazon as they may elect to create a spun off company because they expect this new entity to perform better on their own as opposed to being a part of their conglomerate. That would also create more value for their shareholders who would receive shares of the new company as well. Another scenario is that a new dominant business unit may emerge within Amazon, one that is more profitable or better suited for their long-term strategy. That could compel them to shift the core of their entire business or create a standalone company as well. Of course, it is also possible that Amazon may lose market share in the future due to any of our previous reasons, which could then push them to complete a merger with another similar company like Shopify or Overstock to help regain their foothold in the market. Essentially, in all of these situations, Amazon would still exist, but may not be the same business as they are today. One big and real problem that Amazon will soon face is finding enough employable people to help run their company. You could design the perfect business plan, but if you don't have enough competent people to operate it at all levels, then you don't really have a sustainable business after all. Amazon is one of the top 10 largest employers in the world and employs a staggering 1.5 million people across the globe, which includes their warehouse workers, delivery drivers, and corporate employees. But they suffer from an astronomical turnover rate of roughly 150% a year. This may be a self-inflicted wound that is based on the working conditions and wages that they offer, but either way, it results in an ever-shrinking labor pool of people that are willing or able to work at Amazon. According to a leaked internal research report in 2021, Amazon found that they may run out of people to employ in their US warehouses by 2024. This is due to the fact that there would not be enough new workers to hire who have not previously quit or been fired. To safeguard themselves from a labor shortage, Amazon could loosen their hiring restrictions to allow for a larger pool of workers to be eligible, but that could result in a loss of quality and productivity or they can hope that robots and automation develop quickly enough to cover the majority of the jobs that their human workforce currently handles. The sixth and possibly most damaging threat that Amazon faces is a lack of demand from the public. All of the previous threats we listed could be worked through, but the public votes with their wallet and once they make up their mind, it may be impossible for a company to come back from. But how or why would this even happen? Well, first, you can point to the current quality or lack thereof, of their marketplace. If you look around Amazon these days, you will find a flood of generic manufacturers as well as an excess of sponsored listings. On top of that, Amazon has been plagued by a rise in counterfeit goods, mislabeled products, and fake reviews in recent years. Not only are there too many choices, but the ones that are listed offer suspect quality. The trust level and convenience factor that Amazon has delivered in the past has eroded to the point where it may be easier to buy directly from the manufacturer or from a different merchant that stocks a smaller but higher quality selection of goods. Some brands have even pulled their products from Amazon so they don't get associated with the negative perception that the platform carries. Nike, Ralph Lauren, Patagonia, and North Face have all stopped the direct sales of their products on Amazon. Meanwhile, there has been a growing backlash against the whole concept of Amazon recently. More customers have become aware of Amazon's adverse effects on small businesses and have shifted to buying locally. Many have also been turned off by Amazon's record on ethics and sustainability, compelling them to search for alternatives that are more caring towards people and the planet. There is also the quote, demise of materialism movement that continues to permeate, especially with the younger generation, that has led some to purposely consume less. If all of these trends become more of a societal norm, then big merchants like Amazon really have no way to combat its effects. Their whole business model and valuation is based on continuous growth, so stagnation at any stage due to lower demand would likely be devastating to the company. Now that we have outlined all the possible ways Amazon could fail, we will now provide you with a realistic prediction of what might actually transpire. We believe that it all starts with Jeff Bezos and his vision. He has been hyper-aggressive in his expansion of Amazon into a conglomerate that operates in numerous fields. So far, most of his endeavors have proven to be profitable, 
but we have doubts that every single one of Amazon's over-diversified businesses are future-proof. Meanwhile, the EU's investigation in 2022 is likely just the beginning of Amazon's legal woes, as their giant size and questionable business practices make them an easy target for regulators. At this point, it is hard to see the company growing much bigger since their competition is fierce and their markets are quite saturated. So we think that these new regulations and the implementation of a global corporate tax plan will continue to chip away at their profit levels. These new regulations won't get enacted quickly, but we think they are very likely to be established over the next 10 years. At the same time, the ongoing evolution of consumerism will also continue and might even pick up some pace as the desire for sustainability turns from a want into a need. These factors could lead to an erosion of their profit by as much as 30 to 40 percent, which may then lead Wall Street to call for a new CEO and chairman of the board to inject some new life into the company. In 10 years from now, Bezos will likely decide that continuing to help run the company is just not worth the trouble, especially after being minted the world's first trillionaire. So, he retires and the company quickly heads in a different direction and pivots towards new technologies while also reining in some of Bezos' pet projects. In 15 years, a multitude of new tech, specifically 3D printing, robots, and AI, will then eliminate most of Amazon's current advantages. In 20 years, Amazon executives will start to see the writing on the wall and look to join forces with an emerging leader in one of these new tech fields. Finally, in 25 years, Amazon will have agreed to a merger with a new tech company and enter into a new market altogether. For a company that started in 1994, that would give them a lifespan of roughly 50 to 60 years, which is still well above average, but shockingly limited for such a large and seemingly successful corporation. But, as with everything in life, nothing truly lasts forever. Make sure you check back with us in 25 years to see how accurate we were with our prediction. But for now, comment below on how long you think it would take for Amazon to go out of business. If you want to learn more through our untold stories, then please like this video and subscribe to our channel since it would really help us grow and we would generally appreciate it. Thanks for watching.